and we're good. Um, hello everyone. Um, I'm thrilled to say I'm joined today by the lovely um, Nina Kuypers um, from the UK. Nina runs the movement, the Black Women in Menopause um, on Facebook and um, Nina's all, also pretty active on Twitter. Um, so I have reached out to Nina um, a few weeks back you know, wanting to have a chat because Nina, as I was explaining to you, um, it's a subject that I haven't seen anyone uh, broach menopause um, in the black community in Ireland. And it's something that as we were talking about earlier, I'm really passionate about trying to make sure that we're getting to all elements of um, our all parts of society in relation to um, sharing resources, knowledge, etc. Um, when it comes to menopause. So Nina, thanks a million for joining us today. Um, and it's great to have you. And I know um, we'll have a really great informative chat um, because, you know, menopause, as we know, is not one size fits all. So it's different for all of us. And um, I do know, and I'm kind of learning more as I go, that um, it's, it can be very different too um, for black women. Um, so I don't know, Nina, if you want to maybe just talk a little bit about that and maybe your own experience as well today to date menopause. Yeah, thanks for having me, Catherine. So I guess my passion stems from my own travels after trawling the web. I or it's becoming more apparent that identifying the lack of diversity in the information available from the various media outlets and there's a coupled with that very few high profile black women sharing their own experiences and when you couple the words menopause and black women together then you find that they just aren't represented in mm. UK mm. mainstream media outlets yeah please you know there are absolutely fantastic platforms out there which provide information about women but the images and I guess the experience depicted just didn't resonate with me on a personal level putting people on covers of magazines and or advertising black women or women of color about menopause for me personally just seemed superficial yeah. but you know please don't misunderstand me I I you know I read the information as these platforms are what you need to to engage in order to learn to set a seed to develop that knowledge and understanding and grow a strong foundation but those images weren't me and mm. they don't resonate with me on a personal level yeah. so I guess firstly um black women and women from ethnic minorities portrayed in the UK there's very few of us discussing perimenopause and menopause mm. and the second issue is the varying terms I guess that such as BAM now for me personally I don't like that term that couples black Asian min minority ethnic people together or people of color when associated the term menopause doesn't address that issue mm. why because each community Catherine has its own cultural differences yeah, yeah. and that yeah. affects a woman's personal menopause experience yeah and I suppose understanding these differences would offer a new perspective for women like myself to mm -hmm. suggest what to look out for and give choices to manage those symptoms you know if you have a conversation in some of the groups I guess when you then even though that information is great about let's see it as a, an onion the the outer layer is fantastic but when I ask specific questions to the core of maybe something like my dry scaly eczema skin or hyperpigmentation that I seem to notice on my lower limbs or what about my, what I call my my dry fraggle rock <laughs> hair that I'm rocking at the moment. You can just see them kind of, even though that, let, let, let's try and think of it like a spring. So the spring is loose 
as we you know we're sharing our experiences but when i make specific questions in relation to physical needs that i and i would like help on you can see them just coil mm. and spring back mm. in because yeah. they're not aware they don't yeah. understand and products out there aren't for yeah minorities yeah. so well i i think i think when it comes to the products to you know menopause in general has become such a big industry that um, there's certainly um, a lot of products out there that I would find are vastly overpriced for, you know, what maybe they're saying they'll do and that they certainly don't always um, deliver. Um, and I think that's a that's a huge area. I think challenges kind of, I'd say, all all women um, but definitely I, I think it doesn't take into account like you mentioned earlier that we're that we're all different um, you know and we'll react differently to products as well as we'll react differently to menopause right yeah absolutely and I think I tweeted that the other day in the in the noughties the there was an advert by Reebok called the belly's gonna get you and it was this big it was obviously the audience was for men but it was yeah. this big giant eight foot beer belly running down the street after a, you know a man and it was to incorporate about healthy living and exercise and things and I just tweeted out there because at the moment in the media as you rightly said there the couple of menopause onto products and seeing yeah. the pound signs yeah yeah. I said, well, why don't you have, you know, these menopause products, tongue in cheek, <laughs> running down after middle aged women, <laughs> you know, creams and all sorts of hair products. And, you know, that's yeah. not what people want. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I, I think it's, it's unbelievable. It's, 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 I always say to, to, to people, you know, you really have to take the time to read the label. And once you take the time, once you're done, but, you know, to find the good ones and to know the good products that are out there, the others that are just basically on a, um, you know, possibly a gravy train, um, you know, which is what menopause um, is, is certainly um, at the moment, you know, but yeah, that's a, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and like from your own experience and, you know, uh, women that, you know, where do you, do you, do you think there's any particular um, areas or symptoms that, present more of a challenge than uh, you know in uh, for black women um when when it comes to menopause it's <laughs> excellent question the issue to answer it is it's m1 numbers because there isn't any research out there yeah particularly for uk black women the only study that's been done in the uk was in 2007 and that was on 22 bam ladies however 15 of those were only from the black community now that's okay. not reflective in terms of mm. society in general mm. so again it's so difficult even in america there's a big study called the swan study they had difficulty in separating race and ethnicity from the socioeconomic factors that can affect people's menopause symptoms because there are many symptoms of menopause and it varies greatly from woman mm. to woman mm. that I can't specifically answer the question because if I put myself in that status then I have knowledge and understanding about diet and activity mm. but I you know I'm a young menopausal woman at 48 well having just turned 48 so most of the research will say for black women that we have our menopausal symptoms two years younger than yeah. caucasian ladies but again there's so many other variables to put into that mix and bowl mm, mm. ethnicity lifestyle diet yeah. activity yeah. mental attitude socioeconomic status they all play a huge role in people's menopause travels i don't even fit that criteria on the study that has been done in the swan 
but yet when you look at other studies on people that menopausal symptoms are exacerbated if you're a smoker or your BMI status increases but yet I still don't fit that that box yeah yeah I'm you know I am menopausal and I'm 48 how long have I been perimenopausal I'll be honest I'm ashamed to admit that I failed at the beginning when initially I didn't ask this term what does perimenopausal mean it was actually confirmed Catherine by a blood test age 43 I was actually there to discuss my blood test about something else as I have a genetic blood disorder and when the doctor said you're perimenopausal you know I was there I, I, I was clueless and I was too shocked at that particular time to ask for details zero conversation mm, with the GP mm. not a leaflet nothing now surely I get tongue in cheek there should have been some form of information you know, I don't know welcome to the natural biological process <laughs> here's some information for you on perimenopause <laughs> um so for me I heard what the doctor said Mm. but and I wasn't I certainly wasn't listening but I didn't really take it on board or ask for more details and yeah I've always thought I've been quite mindful of and understand understood about certain medical conditions and I briefly discussed with my mum about menopause but it wasn't something that I'd ever delved into a profound conversation yeah yeah about perhaps I was somewhat naive myself but you could, I guess you've got so many other things going on in your life yeah yeah I guess it wasn't a priority it, at the time so and it kind of I've got um, in a big circle there so so <laughs> n- no <laughs> and there, there aren't things to back it up I can only yeah. provide and share my experiences and start to talk to to other women about those but as a black woman at the moment (laughs) because I I know um 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 from just from research I've done myself that um it's 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 much more common for black women to suffer from fibroids um and I think endometriosis um is that correct or would you would you be aware of that I (laughs) Which can obviously, which can obviously, will obviously impact um, menopause as well, you know, particularly if you have fibroids and heavy periods and all that. Yeah, it's not something I've delved into that rabbit hole of, uh, you, you know, factors that did come out from this Swan study in the, in the US was maybe more prone to things like hot flushes or night sweats mm. or ha- hot flashes, depending on how people refer them to and that could be down to vasoconstriction of blood vessels but again it's a a, a huge rabbit hole plus you could then go on to things like epigenetics and the factors associated on on those what we are more prone to with things like type 2 diabetes which does that interplay cardio you know high Mm -hmm. cardiovascular risk disorders um which I, i i personally think along with many blood disorders that they can't or they still don't know understand why that black people in general have a higher um i can't think of the word now i'll you know what i'll blame that on the 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 brain fog fog. (laughs) why why not (laughs) um have a, a What's that? You know what? It's completely a higher. It's, it's like it's susceptibility. a susceptibility. Uh, yeah, my word. Yeah, a yeah. higher risk factor for, for things like that. And I, I often think because of type two diabetes that when you go into a GP, and you you may say extreme fatigue, night sweats, headaches, um, which were not indicative of type two diabetes for myself, but maybe at the forefront of GPs' investigations. Um, mm. But <laughs> again they they don't really fully understand I think when you enter that GP room Mm. menopause even for doctors themselves aren't 
fully educated and yeah, it isn't one yeah. of the things that are, you know is at the yeah of no I mean we, we 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 have that same challenge here in terms of you know there's some great GPs who have done extra training on top of uh, being in college and so forth but um it doesn't get the time it needs in basic in their training um yeah. you know um, and um, so, I mean, that's something that ideally we, we do want to see changed, um, you know, particularly when you look at uh, early menopause and um, premature ovarian insufficiency and things like that, that yeah. early detection um, is more important, you know, um, or it's really, really important. Um, but I think it's, you know, when we talk about um, different um, ethnic, ethnic backgrounds and so forth, if you look at, um, you know, I often talk about um, some of, um, say, South American societies. So say, for example, if you look at the, the Mayan women in um, Mexico, traditionally, they've always thrown a party or it's a big celebration when they enter menopause and they're much younger um, than us um, because they um, have children extremely young and they may have many children so their body tends to be depleted of estrogen and um, a lot quicker and um, than it would impact you or i and um, so they tend they have a complete different view of it it's much more a celebratory <laughs> experience and yeah. um, and i i you know i think you mentioned that earlier like that is a part of all of this um in terms of your attitude and society's attitude in terms of menopause and aging the two kind of you know they they, they come they come in tandem and um, but that's not to say you know if you're suffering extreme severe menopausal symptoms and um, you know it doesn't matter you don't care what society thinks really you're just trying to get uh, get through it um, um, as best you can you know um, but I think we've a long we have a long road to go in terms of changing the views um, you know that's a that's a mammoth task <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know medical science is being all the foundation is from males so it's yeah, yeah, an area yeah, that, you know the, yeah. the whole endocrine system is so complex in its entirety anyway and, and as you said there as mexico as a culture places like sweden they embrace menopause mm -hmm. and their their symptoms aren't as severe as mm -hmm. other cultures so that again it does play a huge part in that mindset i think certainly in the uk it's quite fixed mindset yeah. currently yeah and hopefully the traction that menopause gets and it is raising awareness it's not a 40 year old or 45 or 35 mm -hmm. it, it, it can happen a lot younger yeah. for yeah. a number yeah. of reasons or mm. be induced because of certain medical conditions yeah. and for me it's about sprinkling those seeds at a young age and yeah. at some point hopefully that seed sprouting thrown or laying down grown you know great foundations for later on because it doesn't just affect that particular person myself mm. but the mm. circle of people yeah. around yeah. And your lifestyle yeah. your your work you know my eight-year-old son knows about the menopause and, <laughs> and hormones yeah. you know as I, I you know as i say to him as he, as he goes as he, or or as he asks me did you do that for me you know i can't remember and he has a giggle and i giggle back thinking don't you worry your hormones are going to get <laughs> you soon yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, 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 it's reverse education. Re re reverse puberty and i think you know that's <laughs> that's that's where you like you've made um great inroads you know diane diane danza brings campaign in the uk for getting it into schools you know we want to achieve the same here in ireland and yeah. um, because that's what we need you know we need it to be part of the curriculum it needs to be a normal part of everyday um you know everyday life really you know um and um and as you mentioned i mean the 
the the impacts are far reaching because it isn't just you it's your family it's your partner it's your friends it's your workplace etc cetera, etc cetera. so um the impacts are far reaching when it comes to menopause and i think once people can understand that if basically um it basically makes it easier doesn't it you know you won't think oh god um you know Catherine's in foul form today do you know or you know you might you know if, if you're working with someone and they're a bit cross with your snappy or whatever you know you have a different understanding um, and maybe it's it's having more empathy you know yeah and uh, you know menopause isn't just an old person's persona no, yeah I can throw yeah. out the question what is old we're all getting old as every second passes yeah. Yeah. it's just another part of the journey of, mm. of life that you go through from a girl to a teenager to a young adult maybe a mother yeah it's it's a it's an important to note that each journey is different at all of these stages some people's symptoms are from what I've read about you know a debilitating as mm. can the menstrual cycle be or it might be endometriosis yeah. for so many the take-home point is we are all different and yeah. we need yeah. to you know let's teach in order to reach education is absolutely paramount mm -hmm. and then it's up to at least then you have that informed choice exactly to, yeah to yeah. know or yeah be aware if it is 10 15 30 40 years down the line that you think oh you know it comes back to you and it's it switched on yeah yeah that's yeah. what, what it yeah. could be rather than going down that path and attribute to, to many other things like people having palpitations and being asked are you taking drugs <sighs> or you know the headaches as i said for being a, a black woman that you, you shouldn't be put in the box of mm. oh, well night sweats headaches maybe extreme fatigue um double vision is type 2 diabetes because we're more at a higher risk of that or a, a cardiovascularly it scares me am i allowed to swear it scares, <laughs> it scares the you shit are. out of me for things like <laughs> osteoporosis sarcopenia yeah. You know, yeah yeah i i want to be strong but yeah. i also I, I am knowledgeable in certain health things because of my educational background in exercise health and nutrition but how many others aren't that yeah. aren't even menopausal yeah on top yeah. of that you know i don't want brittle bones if i have mm. a fall and mm. just oh and, and i guess particularly like if you think about like i would see now um i think a, a lot of women that i work with i think the perimenopause is starting earlier i think i'm i start to see it trickling in slowly from i would say anything from age 43 44 onwards so yeah. i think for like you mentioned earlier like um for black women then if you're saying that on average it is two years before that mm. then you're possibly looking at 41 42 and that's another two years where you've got to make sure the bones are getting what they need because of the estrogen depletion and um, you know so all of that is so important that women know this because if you don't know it you're not going to know well okay well, what do i need to do then and then it's like here are your choices it's hrt it's your lifestyle it's your food it's you know you you can do other things acupuncture you know whatever suits you um but it's known it's like you said the informed choice is god it's just so so important and, and i think that's where um we need to be able to reach all parts of um society so that women understand the choices that they have because otherwise you can go into your GP and maybe you're just told this is how it is and you don't mm. have the information to actually question it and say, well, actually, um, I was doing um, a, a talk the other night and um, uh, there was this lady on and she was basically saying she was a nurse um, and she was saying, you know, her GP visits now or she goes in and tells the GP what she wants. And I kind of said, that's, you know, that is now obviously she's a nurse. So, you know, she's trained and so forth. But I mean, you know, and why not? 
Why not? She has it, she has all the information. She's fully informed. She knows what she wants. And, you know, because, um, you know, and, and the GP just writes her scripts and uh, obviously does her ch checks and keeps an eye on her or whatever. Yeah. Um, but he completely trusts her information because she she she's fully informed and, you know, knows what she wants. And, and, and that's the thing, the great beauty of the troll in the world wide web is mm. the access to the information and people's stories and known mm. as you mentioned their hrt some people like it some people don't some people have mm. negativity some people have positivity and that's all about confirmation bias just because you may sit in one camp doesn't mean that you you know you should bat away other people's beliefs and values mm. for that I, you know that path that you take on any journey is well at that particular point in life you may need that and it might be great for you you don't know you can listen and be educated but at least you have that informed choice as you said yeah. To, yeah. to to go away and make choices and not be lost but talk and plant those seeds mm. so you can make that decision you know it's never too late it never is yeah. you know I'm I'm yeah. still continuing to learn on on my journey but at the same time so much along the way I, what I want to do is share my experience in the hope that well you black helping, women yeah yeah helping don't others. feel yeah. feel alone because yeah I, when this journey first began that's how I felt it, it it was that you are alone okay as I said that at the start you couple women and menopause yes that's the thing that we've got in common as a woman menopause but then let's put black into that triangle um and there are differences whether they are cultural but certainly mm. within the black community it's not something that is talked and discussed about enough just like right. mel you, you know yeah. mental illness can be hard to be talked about okay what you okay need to do is you know start talking and sharing those experiences the only way we could do yeah. this is I think and support big time and i think that's something we've seen in ireland um we've talked so we've talked a lot about mental health um over the last number of years compared to say you know, 20 years ago, it wouldn't have been talked about at all. It was shoved under the carpet. Mm. Whereas there is a lot more conversation around it now. Um, and particularly at the moment, it needs a lot of conversation with COVID and so forth. But, mm. um, and it's like, you know, pregnancy is talked about now as a norm. If we go back 50, 60 years ago, it wasn't necessarily talked about as openly. So yeah. this is, that's where we need to get to with menopause. It needs to be just talked about as the inevitable life, life, change that it is you know that's the that's the key part yeah it's like um, that big obstacle has been put in yeah. the way but as that great quote you know keep chipping away and that hundredth chip that splits that obstacle in two it wasn't that last chip that did it it's just it's those the, yeah. many chips yeah. away yeah along the road yeah over yeah. time yeah yeah. And Nina, just in terms of, I know you mentioned the web yesterday and I think, it, or, or sorry, earlier, um, it's fabulous and it's great for kind of access to information. I also think it can be daunting for many women. Um, but is there is there any, you know, any go to resources that you would recommend um, uh, to women? Oh, another great, another great question. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just any that maybe I'm not familiar with that I haven't shared before. <laughs> oh, maybe not record this bit. <laughs> oh, see, that's something that I'm looking into specifically okay. well, for you can for, you can when you yeah, find black women really yeah when you find some good information um just let me know and I'll share it because yeah because I'd say that any that I've found you've probably already got specific yeah, for yeah, black women yeah, yeah. absolutely not and mm -hmm. what I'm hoping to do is have that platform out there great where yeah. black women women of color and when I say that and because I, I know some negativity of using certain words for raising negative connotations is 
this platform would then be free where women can download information mm -hmm. and look in and delve more into it and connecting and supporting each other to openly discuss their experiences you know not as a as a medical page it's more as a, a safe place mm -hmm. to have that open conversation but apart from the, the ones that that yourself already put out there I, yeah I haven't come across myself any well if you do uh, let us know and we can oh yeah oh yeah share, you share know that. I I know um I must um I will just check um uh, just separately there there is someone in the UK um I think the hormone health coach was speaking with um uh, around um uh, women's health uh, with an emphasis um, on black women but I'll check that out separately and I'll, I'll come back to you on it um, yeah. and um, I can let you know um, well Nina it was lovely it was lovely to talk to you and thanks thanks a million for taking the time and I think um, I'll share your Facebook group and everything so people can um, so that women can join it and yeah, um, I think it'll be It'll be great. It'll be very interesting now to watch your seedling, uh, your seedling <laughs> grow, <laughs> which is we've all we all started off. We all started off at the beginning and um, uh, blossomed into something fantastic. So, you know, I always kind of think if you can help one woman every day, then, you know, that's something great. Um, you know, it's a great yeah, step make forward, ev so. every contact count. Yeah. And yeah. Teach yeah. one, reach one. And yeah. it keeps it keeps going <laughs> yeah yeah big time big time um but thanks thanks nina and um uh, we we keep in touch and watch and see how things go for you and thanks everyone for watching uh, and thanks for having me on catherine it's been no, a pleasure no problem <laughs>